Hey again, welcome back. It's Mr. Lone. I'm excited to do a, another read aloud with you. I'm actually going to read the book that will start today in two parts because it's a little longer, but it's also very important. Uh, November is Native American Heritage Month, and the book we will read today celebrates uh, a Native American who <clears throat> is very popular in history. We are going to read Unstoppable, How Jim Thorpe and the Carlisle Indian Football Team Defeated Army. The morning sun shone brightly. As it climbed in the sky, it warmed the grass in front of Keokuk Hall on the Haskell Institute campus. This day in mid-January 1900 was warmer than usual in Lawrence, Kansas. It would be a special day at the boarding school for American Indian students. Today, one of the best football teams in the country would visit Haskell. The Carlisle Indian Industrial School team had been riding on trains since Christmas when it had beaten the best team in the West, the University of California. On a three-week trip back to Pennsylvania, the Carlisle team stopped at several American Indian boarding schools. Today was Haskell's turn. All the Haskell boys gathered in their uniforms for a dress parade. The girls wore their best dresses and stood huddled together. The crowd buzzed with excitement. The Haskell students came from many different tribes. They spoke dozens of different languages, but they were united in their love for the new sport of football. One short, skinny 12-year-old with dark, wavy hair stood off by himself. He tossed a battered homemade football in the air and caught it. He squinted into the sun as he watched the Carlisle players stride across the lawn to the dining hall. He dreamed of one day playing alongside them. The boy, whose mother called him Wathohuk, bright path in his native soft language, also had another name. He was called Jim Thorpe. In just 12 years, Jim's dream would come true. This great-great-grandson of the salt warrior Blackhawk would lead the Carlisle football team to one of the greatest victories in sports history. Jim Thorpe loved to hunt and fish and to ride horses near his hometown, <clears throat> near his home in Indian Territory in what is now Oklahoma. He spent long afternoons running and chasing his dogs along the banks of the Canadian River. But Jim didn't much care for school. He ran away often. He even ran away from Haskell several, several times. Jim's father, Hiram, finally decided to send him to Carlisle Industrial School when Jim was 16. Maybe there, more than a thousand miles from home, Jim would settle down and learn a trade. Carlisle had been created by the military in 1879 to educate the children of American Indians. The American government took native children from their homes and sent them to boarding schools far away. The children were forced to march and to learn trades like baking or blacksmithing. The schools cut the children's hair and burned their traditional clothes. Teachers would not allow them to speak their languages or to practice their religions, often beating the students for doing so. Like many boys at Carlisle, Jim worked on a nearby farm to earn extra money during the school year. One day, while walking home from work, Jim saw the boys' track team practicing the high jump. Standing there in his overalls and work boots, the scrawny teenager watched the athletes try to jump over a bar set between two posts. The bar was set just over Jim's head, five feet, nine inches above the grass. None of the boys could jump over it without knocking it from its posts. Can I try? Jim asked. The other boys laughed at him. Go ahead, one of them said looking at his big boots and dusty work clothes. Jim laced up a borrowed pair of track shoes. He trotted up to the bar and jumped, kicking his legs as he had seen the others do. When he landed in the sand pit on the other side, the bar still rested on its post. He had cleared it. Jim picked himself up and brushed off his overalls. He turned to the track team and laughed. Then he returned the shoes and walked away. <clears throat> Later, another boy came to Jim's room. He told him that Glenn Pop Warner, coach of the Carlisle track and football teams, wanted to see him. Jim walked slowly into Coach Warner's office. Looking down at his own feet, Jim asked, Have I done anything wrong? Son, you've only broken the school record in the high jump, Coach Warner said. That's all. Pop Warner handed Jim a uniform and said, I'll see you at practice tomorrow. 
Jim loved all sports. He was fast. He could jump high and far. He could run all day without getting tired, it seemed. And he was tough. He shined in baseball, lacrosse, track, hockey, and football. Carlisle's varsity football team, one of the best in the country, was known for its speed and cleverness. The Indians ran unusual plays and often fooled their opponents. One time, they even hid the football in a player's shirt, and he dashed for a touchdown. Jim told Coach Warner he wanted to play for the varsity team. Coach Warner looked the teenager up and down. He knew the boy was a speedy and gifted athlete, but Jim was very small. Come back and see me when you're bigger, Pop said. Jim was not discouraged. For months, he trained and he ran. He also grew. In the fall, Jim begged Coach Warner to put him on the varsity team. Pop stood on the sidelines as his team practiced. He still thought Jim was too small, but he decided to give him a chance. He tossed him a football and told him to run out on the field to give the team some tackling practice. The varsity players roared and ran at Jim. He cut and dodged as bigger players tried to tackle him. He ran the length of the field and into the end zone without being tackled. Jim trotted back to Pop Warner. He smiled as he tossed the football to the coach. <clears throat> we'll pick up there tomorrow, but if you get a chance, definitely uh, check out some history and read a little bit about Native American Heritage Month. And I hope you are enjoying the read alouds. I'll see you soon again. Take care.